Mm. Okay, so for those of you just joining us, Anthony, uh, uh, hold on for a hot second. I just want to let people know if they're just now joining us what's taking place here and what they're looking at. Live pictures right now out of San Francisco, San Francisco International Airport, our affiliate KTVU bringing us these pictures. And you're now looking at a, a scene where they have tried to put out possibly flames or at least try to control the smoke of a Boeing 777 that crashed there upon landing. This flight coming from Seoul, South Korea, flight 214 on Asiana Airlines. And we understand you're seeing the route right there uh, from Seoul, South Korea, making its way all the way to San Francisco, uh, California. And Anthony uh, Castorani was at a hotel nearby and he is describing for us, he's on the phone with us right now, he is describing for us what he saw. He just happened to be uh, looking out the window, watching planes come in, was enjoying that. He saw this flight, which by his description didn't appear to be in distress. He saw no emergency or first responder apparatus on the runway as it was coming in. It appeared that it was making a beautiful landing, uh, nose pitched up. But then at the point when um, the rear wheels uh, touched the runway, Anthony is telling us that the nose wheel did not touch the runway. It appears that there was some sort of problem with the stability of that plane. It started cartwheeling. He saw actually one of the wheels, uh, one of the wings uh, come off as the plane continued to cartwheel before the second wing came off. And he saw the smoke. He saw uh, fire underneath uh, the hull of the plane. And Anthony, if you're still with us, um, at that juncture, all of that taking place just in a matter of seconds, right in plain sight in your view? Yes, uh, it happened with, uh, you know, within seconds. I couldn't even begin how long it was. It seemed like an eternity at that moment of you watching something this catastrophe has happened, oh. um, you know, you're just kind of taking it in and you're not even timing it. But yes, all, oh within, Atlanta. all within, I'm sure, 10, 15 seconds. Okay, and Anthony, I hate to interrupt you, but now we have a tighter view of the remnants of this plane, and certainly it looks pretty bad. It certainly looks like the, the midsection of that plane, um, it doesn't appear to be there intact. Uh, you see the emergency uh, workers around the plane there. We heard a description earlier from our Richard Quest that the emergency slides were put into place, which would be an indication that there are indeed some you know, survivors of this plane. But Richard, uh, back with me now, as we look at this with a tighter view, it does seem to be um, pretty substantial damage there in the right. midsection of this well, plane. From Anthony, we've just heard some excellent information about yes. what he saw. And looking now at the pictures, and I can't see the pictures that you're looking at at the moment, but I can see close-ups of the aircraft. These are judging by, and it, it is somewhat bewildering that people who've just come down the emergency slides immediately turn back and start taking photographs of the aircraft. But that's what we're looking at now. We're looking at on Twitter feeds pictures taken by people, uh, passengers, after they've evacuated from the aircraft. And what we can see now from this 777LR, this is a, this plane was delivered in uh, 2006. It's, we, we now know a lot more about the aircraft. What seems to have happened, judging by what Anthony has said, of course, is that there has been a catastrophic landing, but not a declared emergency. So far, there's no evidence that we're seeing that. Something obviously has happened on the, upon landing, which has caused the main gear to collapse. In doing so, of course, we still see the left wing. The right wing is where the fire has been coming from, and that is where the smoke has come from. And obviously, in the process of the accident, the aircraft has split apart, because what we can't see is the rear tail. We cannot, or at least the pictures I'm looking at, cannot see the tail uh, or, or the rear of the fuselage, which leads one to assume that obviously, the, the, I mean, sp stating the obvious, the plane has split apart of, uh, upon the crash landing. This is a crash landing by any definition, and obviously now passengers are, there are survivors, we can see the survivors, we can see pictures that have, they, they've taken, and uh, we will now obviously have to work out why, or the, uh, the authorities, the NTSB, who even as we speak will be on their way with a team, a GO team will have been alerted. That will include not only people from Boeing, it will include people from Pratt & Whitney, which is the engine manufacturer of this particular model. It will include 
just about uh, they will include representatives from the NTSB in Washington. It's known as the GO team. The ASEAN Airlines will also have their own team that will be on their way to the event in San Francisco. At ASEAN itself, at their headquarters, to give you an idea of what they will be doing at the moment, they will have senior management, engineering, passenger relations, PR. They will have now congregated in a type of what's known as an epic room, or that's where they're in a, a, a closed room where information will flow in and flow out as they deal with this emergency. Mm. Oh, this is a very serious situation. Terrible to see these images right here because, uh, Richard, we are getting a clearer view of the remnants of this plane and we certainly see a number of first responders that have descended there and that rear tail that you were talking about I mean it is nearly non-existent I mean it's unidentifiable at least from from my uh, layman's view and we're seeing the midsection of the plane uh, the upper portion the, the rooftop so to speak of that plane is burned out and you can see of course all of the uh, flame retardant uh, around it we do see the two wings um, our a Anthony um, uh, Castorani, who was an eyewitness, had described that he, you know, saw um, the breakage of this plane while it was cartwheeling. Um, what we're looking at right now, and you can see one of the engines uh, just kind of resting next to the hull of this plane. But Richard, what's fascinating here too is, uh, according to Anthony, who was watching this, he said that there was nothing in place that would you know, infer no. that there was an emergency landing, I, even though by I, definition you are calling it an emergency landing? Simply because no, of the no, no. I mean, no, I'm not calling it an emergency. Okay. I, it's a crash landing. This is a crash landing. And, crash landing. Um, I, I've no doubt that some of the aficionados will sort of, uh, will, 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 will have better terminology for it. But judging from what Anthony said, and the fact that there was no emergency tr uh, vehicles on the runway, and was, there was no traffic, if you like, no emergency traffic that had been picked up by anybody else, this plane has crashed on landing. And I'm guessing we're going to be looking at something like a failure of the landing gear, a failure, I mean, it's rampant speculation. Okay. But those are the sort of things, or, or some loss of control at the moment when the main landing gear touched the runway, which caused the right side of the aircraft uh, wing to, to, to obviously impact the ground, the plane to break up, and this is what will be investigated. Now, on the, to bear in mind, one of the important things here, looking at the pictures, the plane will have landed with sufficient fuel on board, even though it's going to six and a half, six thousand mile trip from Incheon in Seoul. It will have had sufficient fuel on board, which is what you're looking at in the fire, for the plane to obviously go to an alternate destination and to hold in the alternate destination and all the reserves necessary. And that's what's been burning, of course, that reserve fuel that the aircraft still has on board. On the positive side, from the investigator's point of view, even though much of the aircraft does look to be destroyed, the front, of course, the way where the, 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 the pilots are, seems to be in good, in good order. Okay. The cockpit voice recorder will give a very good account. And the flight data recorder, it's at the back of the plane, so it will probably have been damaged, but it is solid state in that sense. So there will be very good information mm -hmm. for the investigators, not only from those flying, but also electronic information that will tell them. This is one accident, one incident, that I have almost no hesitation in telling you. They will know very quickly what, what the...